today we are going to talk about the sources of drugs they are classified as a natural semi synthetic and synthetic natural sources are the plants animals minerals and microorganisms then we have some semi synthetic drugs actually the semi synthetic drugs they are obtained from the natural sources and we do some chemical modification we call it as the semi synthetic and synthetic drugs are produced artificially or they are designed in the labs only in the laboratories only so this is how we classify the sources of drugs now the natural ones in that first plants plant source is the oldest source of the drugs it's the oldest source and most of the drugs in the ancient times were derived from the plants almost all parts of the plants are used that means we can use the leaves stem bark fruit and roots as you can see in the different parts of a plant so we can use all of them for the different or various drugs now we'll see the which drugs are extracted from the leaves the leaves of the digitalis purpura are the source of digitoxin and digoxin as you can see this question is also asked in the neat pg exam means they have shown the diagram and they ask for the identification of this so digitalis purpura which is obtained these are the leaves of the digitalis purpura from which digitoxin and digoxin is extracted and that we used for the cardiac glycoside we use as a cardiac glycoside in the treatment of chf chronic heart failure or congestive heart failure now as you can see there is a leaves of eucalyptus oil leaves of eucalyptus which gives the oil of eucalyptus which is a important component of the cough and cold syrup is the important component of a cough and cold syrup then tobacco leaves gives the nicotine right atropa belladonna which gives atropine so these are the various parts of a plant particularly leaves from which we extracted the different drugs right now after leaves we have some flowers poppy papaver somniferum gives us morphine which is opioid opioid analgesic morphine which is extracted from the flowers as you can see it is extracted from the flower poppy papaver somniferum then vincarosia this vincarosia gives vincristine and vinblastine anti cancer drugs vincristine and vinblastine then rose gives the rose water that we use as a facial toner it is used mostly as a facial toner for the various reasons then we have fruits senna pods gives anthracene which is a purgative senna pods gives an anthracene this is a purgative or calabar beans which gives physostigmine which is a cholinomimetic agent calabar beans physostigma venezosum it is obtained from the fruit physostigma venezosum so we got the physostigmine which is a cholinomimetic agent cholinomimetic agent then we have seeds it is very common seeds of nux swamica that we give strychnine and this strychnine is a cns stimulant strychnine is a cns stimulant then castor oil gives a castor seeds gives a castor oil that we use in the treatment of constipation right castor oil is used in the treatment of constipation then isab gol as you can see this is the isab gol this is isab gol again it is used in the treatment of constipation so all these are the seeds which is obtained from the plant then roots ipecac roots gives imetin used to induce vomiting as in accidental poisoning if there is accidental poisoning we use the imetin that we all know which is obtained from the ipecac then it has also amebicidal properties imetin is it has also amebicidal properties or this ipecac has some amebicidal properties then rawolfia serpentina it gives reserpine it's a anti hypertensive drug reserpine was used for hypertension treatment rawolfia serpentina 
so this is what we can extract from the root now the bark cinchona bark gives quinine and quinidine which are anti malarial drugs cinchona bark quinidine also has some anti arrhythmic properties it has anti arrhythmic properties also atropa belladonna gives atropine which is an anti cholinergic drug atropa belladonna gives atropine which is an anti cholinergic hyoscyamus niger gives hyoscine which is also an anti cholinergic drug so all these drugs are obtained from the bark of a plant now stem chondrodendron tomentosum gives d tubercularin it gives the d tubercularin which is a skeletal muscle relaxant and that we used in the in the general anesthesia for the relaxation of the skeletal muscles we use d tubercularin and where we use this d tubercularin in the general anesthesia for a skeletal muscle relaxation now this is what we have seen the plant sources now we'll see the animal sources means in we have heard about the insulin this insulin is obtained from the pancreas nowadays human insulin is also available but in ancient times we have used the cow's pancreas we have used the beef pancreas for the extraction of insulin which is a anti diabetic hormone what insulin is a anti diabetic hormone we can use in the type 1 diabetes mellitus then we use the fish sperms for the extraction of protamine sulfate now where we use this protamine sulfate protamine sulfate is the antidote for the heparin in the heparin toxicity we use the protamine sulfate now uh heparin from where the heparin is obtained heparin is a anticoagulant so we can extracted heparin from the intestine of the pig and lungs of the ox this heparin which is a polysaccharide which is obtained from the intestine or the lungs of the pigs and ox respectively so these are the various animal sources or cod liver oil for example from which we can extract vitamin a and vitamin d right so these are the various animal sources from which we can extract the different drugs now the metallic sources metallic sources iron is used in the treatment of iron deficiency anemia right zinc is used as a health immune supplement or zinc oxide paste used in the wounds uh, it is also used in the eczema treatment zinc oxide iodine we all know iodine is a antiseptic providan iodine we use as a antiseptic iodine supplements are also used in the treatment of gout iodine supplements or radioactive iodine we use this in the treatment of gout then gold salts they are also used in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis so all these are the metals now fluorine fluorine has some antiseptic properties borax borax has antiseptic properties as well then selenium sulfide this is very common selenium sulfide is used as a anti dandruff shampoo selenium is a metal then petroleum is used in the preparation of liquid paraffin we use the petroleum petroleum jelly in the uh, preparation of a liquid paraffin so all these are the metals that we use for the extraction of the drugs now microbiological source or source of the antibiotics mostly they are natural they are obtained from the fungus bacteria actinomycetes like penicillin streptomycin or we have some semi synthetic antibiotics like chemically altered natural compound what we do we uh, do some chemical modification in the natural ones so we call it as a semi synthetic then synthetic are the chemically designed in the laboratory so we call it as a synthetic like norfloxacin moxifloxacin so these are the pure synthetic drugs like fluoroquinolones they are chemically designed in the laboratories but semi synthetic drugs we do some chemical modification on the natural compound like ampicillin amikacin so these are the semi synthetic one now these are the source of the various antibiotics like as you have seen first drug penicillin which is obtained from penicillium notatum then all other drugs these are the 
sources of the various drugs, various antibiotics like Bacillus subtilis, Bacitracin, Bacillus polymyxa, polymyxin, Amphotericin B is obtained from the Streptomyces nodosus, Chloramphenicol, Tetracycline, Erythromycin, Streptomycin. Streptomycin is obtained from uh, Streptomycin is obtained from Streptomyces erythrus means these antibiotics are obtained from all these microorganisms, natural antibiotics, we can say that. Now we have some recombinant DNA technologies. In the recombinant DNA technologies, there is a cleavage of the DNA by enzyme restriction endonucleases. What does it we do? There is a cleavage of DNA by enzyme restriction endonucleases. The desired gene is coupled to rapidly replicating DNA. It may be viral, bacterial or plasmid. The new genetic combination is inserted into the bacterial cultures which allow production of vast amount of the genetic material. So we call it as a recombinant DNA technology. With the help of this recombinant techno technology, huge amount of drugs can be produced. Advantages are the huge amount of the drugs can be produced. Drugs can be obtained in pure form. It is less antigenic. So induce immune system. But what is the problem or disadvantages or drawbacks? Well equipped labs are required, highly trained staffs required. It is complex and complicated technique. These are the disadvantages of the recombinant DNA technology. Now drugs which are produced by this genetic engineering or DNA recombinant technology are the human insulin it is very commonly used. It's a human insulin that we use mostly. Now uh, human growth hormone and hepatitis B vaccine, human growth hormone and hepatitis B vaccine, these are the examples of DNA recombinant technology. We have seen the semi-synthetic one, actually how will you define the semi-synthetic? When the nucleus of drug obtained from the natural source retained but the chemical structure is altered, nucleus will remain there, we call it as a semi-synthetic. When we call it as semi-synthetic, when the nucleus of drug obtained from the natural source is retained, but chemical structure is altered, then we call it as semi-synthetic. Drugs like epomorphine, diacetylmorphine, ethinylestradiol, homotropine, ampicillin, these are the semi-synthetic drugs, hydromorphone, hydrocodone. What we have retained, the nucleus of drug obtained from the natural source is retained. But the chemical structure is altered, then we call it as a semi-synthetic drugs. Now we have synthetic, purely designed in the laboratories. Nucleus of the drug from the natural source as well as chemical structure is altered. Both nucleus of the drug which is obtained from natural source is also altered and chemical structure is also altered. So we call it as a uh, synthetic drug, purely designed in the laboratories. Most of the drugs that are used today are synthetic drugs like we use aspirin, paracetamol, ibuprofen, most of the NSAIDs, they are purely designed in the laboratories. So we call it as a synthetic drugs. So that's all for today's. We have seen the sources of the drugs, natural, semi-synthetic and synthetic.